Morning, ladies. Thought we might kick off uh, a few minutes early because we are totally at capacity and we are super excited about that. So let's let's get started. So my name is Amanda Rogers. I'm the CEO of WK Digital, but in general, just facilitating this session for the lovely people from MathWorks, who I'll, I will introduce now. A couple of housekeeping items. So um, if you do need to use the toilet, I think it's just out here and to the left. Um, just make sure to let them know on your way out that you can get back in. Um, everyone's phones are at least on silent, yes, so that we, we all have 100% lovely focus on this session. Um, everyone can hydrate, lollies, excellent, really excited you guys are here. I think that about covers, so one just friendly reminder, this session goes till 12.30. Uh, we'll start to probably wrap a few things up right before 12.30 because we're trying to get through everything on time, make sure you can get to the next session. So um, even if you are attending a session in this very same room, um, after 12.30, everyone will have to leave. As you know, they're scanning people on the way in. So I will not trying to be rude and say, get out, but that's what they told me to tell you, so. <laughs> Um, so let me introduce uh, the ladies from uh, um, MathWorks. Um, first we have Ruth Ann Marchand. She's from the US. She is an application engineer. Um, and uh, she's one of the people that'll be leading you through the session. And Ruth Ann's superpower is intense focus. So watch her, she will have focus eyes. Very important to watch that. Now, Cindy is from the Sydney office at MathWorks and um, her superpower amongst also being a marketing specialist in general, understanding the uh, um, uh, user interface component of this session. Um, her, um, her superpower is getting sometimes disagreeable people to come to her side of things. So if you have a problem, I will send Cindy over and it will quickly be fixed. Um, anyway, so uh, we will take it away. I'll let uh, Cindy and Ruth Ann um, come up. And um, if anyone needs anything non-related to Internet of Things or deep learning, I will be right over there. Thank you very much. All right. Hi. Thank you so much, Amanda, for that introduction. Um, so I'm Cindy, really nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'll, besides me and Ruth Ann, we also have Daryl in the room who's here to help out because we have such a big group of people. So uh, you do have in front of you the worksheet of uh, basically how to set up your computer. Nothing is too difficult, hopefully, but hopefully you do have a Chrome browser and a webcam. Uh, which you'll be needing in the workshop section. If not, then please just have a look and see if some, you can um, have someone on the table who can, you can work with. Uh, so if you need any help, just raise your hand and Ruth Ann or Daryl will be able to assist you. Um, and I thought we'd just get started with three minutes, three, four minutes, um, where maybe you can introduce yourselves to all of the other fabulous people on your table and also get started with the workshop. So let's do that. All right, everyone introduce each other. Each other. <laughs> All right, I hope everyone got a chance to know each other. <laughs> All right, there will be more hands-on portions, so uh, <laughs> let's all come back together now. Um, hello, everyone, again. <laughs> so um, I will be speaking for about 10 minutes on deep learning and the Internet of Things, just to introduce you to the concepts. Um, and this is a beginner level workshop, so if you're not quite sure what those terms mean, then don't worry, you're in the right place. Uh, and then I will hand over to Ruth Ann to run through the workshop portions. So uh, let's get started. Uh, and if you haven't finished the work, then don't worry, you can kind of just do it um, while I'm speaking. So the goal is really for you to see how easy it is to get started and get up and running with your own deep learning and IoT projects. Uh, again, I'll be speaking about the concepts, and then we have three exercises for you. So the first exercise is image, uh, pro image recognition and classification. So you would have pictures of fruit on the tables in front of you that you can use, or really anything that you can hold up in front of a webcam, you can use that. Uh, our second exercise is basically doing the same thing, but then we're sending that data to the cloud. And then our third exercise will be retrieving all of the data that we as a group are collecting and then running some analysis on it. So let's get started. So we've all heard about AI, 
but hands up if you think that artificial intelligence is something that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much you'd be correct. It's everywhere. It's in our smart home devices, it's in our streaming services, it's in the apps on our phones, and it's in the cars that we drive. And something I want to talk about is you may have heard these terms before, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. So I just want to talk about how they relate to each other. So artificial intelligence is any machine kind of computer system that can think and act in a way that mimics human intelligence. Machine learning on the, is a subset of artific artificial intelligence, and you can kind of see we increase in complexity as we go along. But machine learning is where we've trained a model to learn a task from data, and in order to do that, we have to tell it what features to look for in order to make analysis and run predictions. Deep learning is a subset, again, of machine learning. And in deep learning, it's actually kind of loosely based on the neural networks of the human brain. So in deep learning, we don't have to tell the machine what features to look for. The algorithms can kind of run, run it themselves. So go a bit more in depth. Um, if we look at machine learning, how it works is we start with some data. And let's say the data is images of vehicles. So after we get all of this data, we have to do a step called feature extraction. And this is a manual step where we go in and we tell, we kind of just label what are the features of a car versus a truck versus a, a bicycle that the machine can use to identify these things. So in deep learning, it's kind of similar. We start with data. In fact, we start with a lot of data, but then we bypass the feature extraction phase. The machine algorithms can intelligently learn on their own what are the most distinguishing features that make up a car versus a truck versus a bicycle. So let's take a quick look at deep learning in action. So this is image recognition. Uh, this is a camera panning around a room and looking at different objects. And when it lands on one, it tries to go ahead and classify it. So you can see all the labels here on the right are different categories. There's also a percentage, and that's the confidence score. So how confident are we that this is sunglasses? 70%. How confident are we that chainmail? It's, uh, it's definitely chainmail. Uh, so you can see it's kind of doing a Good job, yeah, it's a goblet of red wine. There we go. It's, <laughs> it's, it's doing a pretty good job. So you can, so how does this work? There's a few steps in a deep learning process. First, you gather, gather data. The more data you have, the better. And then we make a choice. We can either train a model from scratch, or we can do a step called transfer learning. So that's where we take a pre-trained neural network and we feed it new data. So for instance, we might have a, a pre-trained neural network that can already really efficiently extract features from data, but it's vehicles. So what we would do is feed it images of, say, cats and dogs, and then we tune the network until it can really reliably differentiate between cats and dogs. So there's a few benefits of doing transfer learning. It takes less time. You also tend to need less data. And today, we're using a pre-trained neural network called AlexNet and AlexNet was trained using millions of different uh, data points, and it can classify over a 1,000 different categories. So apart from AlexNet, there's a bunch of other pre-trained neural networks you can use to start your deep learning journey that have come from research. So we have all of these neural networks that are, have been fed with millions of data points trained by really smart people do you think they can classify objects correctly most of the time? Any thoughts? <laughs> the answer is not really, no. <laughs> so let's take a look at this. If I look at this picture, I see an amazing plate of fries. But GooglyNet sees chocolate sauce. It's, <laughs> it's not very confident. It's about 2.28 on a scale from 0 to 1. But there's a lot of reasons why this may have happened, why it may have gotten confused. So if you look at the image itself, you can kind of see that it's dark, the lighting's not great, it's a bit blurry around the edges, and there's also multiple items in the picture. So that may have thrown it off. And then there's also, we have to figure in things like the ne network itself. Was the network trained to recognize fries in the first place? And if it was, how much data did we give it to learn what is a fry? And what was the quality of that data? So these are all things we have to consider. So now that I've talked about deep learning, let's talk about the Internet of Things, or IoT. 
So if you own any of these devices, if you own a Fitbit, a smartwatch, a smart TV, a smart thermostat, any of these things, then you're already part of the IoT ecosystem. So these devices or things are collecting data all the time. They're collecting things like how many steps you're taking, your heart rate, the temperature of your home. And it's sending it to the cloud, to what's called an IoT aggregator. And once it's in the cloud, that data can then be re retrieved at a later point and analysis can be run on it. So today we're using an IoT aggregator called ThingSpeak, which is an open IoT platform. In a typical IoT workflow, there's three steps. So first is collecting all of the data from the things. Second step is to analyze it. So are there trends in the data? Can we run some machine learning to run predictions on it? And then the third step is to act. So let's say you have a smart home thermostat system. The system might be able to recognize automatically that the temperature in your home has gone above your preferred settings. So it can adjust your thermostat automatically, maybe send a notification to your phone, maybe send a tweet, why not? And that would be an IoT workflow. So today we are looking at the first two steps. We'll be collecting data and analyzing data. So I'll hand over to Ruth Ann to run through the workshop portion. Great, thank you very much, Cindy. So let us get started with the next slide. So now we're going to move on to the hands-on portion of our workshop. Um, so a couple of, uh, before we get started, how many people here still need a little bit more time to set up? A couple of people at this table, a couple of people at that table. Okay, great. Um, do you guys need a little bit of help? Okay. Um, I've got some helpers, so Daryl and Cindy can walk around and help a little bit. So while we are getting the last couple of people started um, with their setup, uh, I want to get a sense of um, the experience that we have in the room. How many people in the room have heard of MATLAB? Oh, you have made my day. I am very <laughs> excited about this. OK. Um, how many people have heard of Simulink? OK, half the people, that's, that's also very exciting to hear. So my background is, so I'm an application engineer um, at MathWorks, and my focus area is in the Simulink area. And I've been really excited to learn about deep learning and IoT to present this workshop to you. So um, since we have a large number of people in the room who have heard of MATLAB, um, my next question to you is, how many people here are familiar with MATLAB online? Much fewer people. So that, that's part of what we're going to be talking a little bit about today. Um, and we're going to be, so now you can access MATLAB online through your internet browser, which for those of you who have s completed the setup steps, you will see your MATLAB online browser here. Um, so I'm going to switch over to my laptop just to give a little bit of a walkthrough. But what you're, see what you're going to see is probably familiar because everyone here has kind of seen MATLAB. So oh, this uh, is what MATLAB Online should look like on most of your computers. And what you'll first recognize is that it looks very similar to what the desktop application looks like. You have over on the left-hand side um, your folders with all of your files. So you should be able to see the exercises um, that you've downloaded for the workshop. Um, and you can use the command window to type in your commands uh, right here. So if you want to get started, you can double click on exercise one. And this will open up the MATLAB script right within the MATLAB online environment. OK. So exercise one um, is what in the setup steps on step three. Um, part three, download the exercises. Uh, it asks, the step is to unzip. Uh, a set of files from a URL. And once you do that, the exercises should be uh, in the uh, current folder view uh, in your uh, MATLAB online browser. Okay, so now let's switch back over to the slides. We've got our awesome AV people in the back helping me with this. Awesome, thank you very much. Okay, okay so. Exercise, so for this workshop, we have three exercises, and that effectively will go through the workflow steps that Cindy presented. 
In the first exercise, we're going to be using a deep network called AlexNet to recognize objects. So on the tables, you will have some pictures of fruit, and that will be the, the main things that we're hoping you can use for this exercise. But feel free to improvise and say use, uh, put, put up like the water jug or the, um, the, the cups if you, if you want. Okay, so I'm gonna walk us through the code briefly um, to explain what it is you're seeing in the, the code here, and then I'll give you some time and together uh, at your tables to um, run the code and experiment uh, with, with this uh, example. So in the first um, section of the code, you're going to connect to your web camera. So the, the, function, the, the, um, the line of code that says camera equals webcam one um, is what you can use to um, open up the webcam and get access to it in MATLAB. The next line of code is the line of code that's loading the neural network. So in this example, we are using AlexNet, and it is a pre-trained uh, neural network model, and you have access to this within MATLAB. Did you have a question? Yeah, did you tell me first because you're using it on my If we were on desktop MATLAB, could we still do this? Yes, so you can still do this in the desktop MATLAB um, application. Um, you'll, it would require certain toolboxes, so when you went through the steps, um, it gave you access to a trial license, um, so you'd need the same toolboxes in the desktop version. Um, but uh, does that answer your question? Okay, great. Okay, so the first step was connecting to the camera, the second line of code was related to loading the neural network, and then the third section of code here is about capturing and classifying your image data. So you can see here, the first line says, picture equals snapshot camera. So this is the line of code that um, takes a picture uh, with the camera that's on your computers. Then we're resizing the image to a size that AlexNet expects. So AlexNet is trained using a certain size of image, and this command here is resizing that picture that your laptop takes um, to the expected size. The next line of code is, the, the line that uh, where, where you're actually, the, the line that you use to classify the image that you've taken with your webcam. So uh, classify and net and picture, so you're passing in the neural network AlexNet, and you're passing in the picture, and the output of this function is a set of labels and a set of scores. The labels are what the neural network thinks is in the picture, so apple, orange, banana, bottle of Coke for some of those on the table. Um, I don't think it has bottle of Coke. Um, and then it will output a score, so a confidence score. How, how confident am I that this is what the, that the label's correct? And then the rest of the code is sorting um, the, the scores, um, bubbling up the most confident score to the top, so when you, um, output the picture in a figure, it will write at the top um, what AlexNet thinks the image is. So let us move to the next slide here. So uh, just a few reminders as we go through this exercise. Um, there's going to be a couple of factors that can impact object classification, and Cindy mentioned them earlier, but I want to r r go through them again. The first is lighting then the position, the position of the object in the webcam, whether or not there's other objects in the image, and then finally, was the network trained very well with this type of object? Um, so I would like to illustrate this with an example of um, Cindy's cat. Uh, here are two pictures of Cindy's cat. And in the first picture, we took this, she took this picture of her cat and asked AlexNet, what do you think this is? And the output was Old English Sheepdog. Um, to me, that doesn't look like an Old English Sheepdog. It actually looks like a cat. Um, let's go back. Whereas in the second picture, same cat, different position, maybe some different lighting conditions, and AlexNet comes out with a Siamese cat um, with a greater confidence score. So at least it's figured out that this is probably a cat instead of a dog. 
Um, so to that end, you may see some interesting results. Um, keep note of those results as you are going through this part of the, the workshop, because we're going to be discussing them uh, when we come back together as a group. So let's get started. Um, here are the steps for the, the section. So first, you know, place an object in front of your camera. The second step is to place a cursor on line one in your editor. So for those of you who have used MATLAB before, um, this should be, you should be able to um, navigate to this pretty quickly. And then three, press the green run button, which is up at the top. It, if you have troubles finding it, just let us know. Um, you may need to press allow to use the webcam for the first time. And then finally, look at your results. So I'm going to give you about five to seven minutes to go through this. Um, if you have problems with running your scripts or any other questions, um, just let us know. Um, and we'll be looping back in a couple minutes. OK. We are going to bring the room back to the screen on the PowerPoint presentations, um, uh, just to wrap up the first exercise. Um, that was fun, wasn't it? Fantastic. Um, so I would like to uh, discuss the results. I saw some interesting results come up. Um, and we're going to do that by way of a few questions. But before we get to the questions, um, audience participation is encouraged. And we have t-shirts, like the ones that Cindy and I are wearing, um, for audience participation. And the, these ones are women specific. And they've got She Loves MATLAB on the side. So get ready for some audience participation. OK, so the first question is, how many of you had objects that were classified? Hopefully everyone. Great. Fantastic. Um, were your objects correctly classified? Sometimes, sometimes not. OK. Um, do you think you can improve the accuracy? Yes. OK. How? Lighting. So we make sure that there's no other objects in the picture as well. Lighting and other objects. So that's two. You get a t-shirt. Uh, one second. Where's our t-shirt hander outers? Cindy, can you do t-shirts? Um, what else? The alignment of the picture, yeah. yeah. OK, yeah, that's another way. Um, Cindy, at the back, um, you want to raise your hand? And then lots of volunteers. Can you raise your hand? You'll get a um, t-shirt. I'll go to this side of the room. Oh, I like this answer. So the you'd want to say the answer again? Uh, so maybe we could uh, train our neural nets to recognize more fruits, or maybe choose a different database that's better at identifying fruits. Yeah, very good answer. I'm trying to pick people from different tables. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think I've gotten this table yet. OK, yeah, but changing the background. OK, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it's a very different thing. That whenever I'm showing this pencil, it's showing the face powder. It, what, what, was it, uh, what did it think of? Oh, really? That's interesting. <laughs> um, and then we'll do one last one at the back over here. The resolution. The resolution. Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting um, one as well, yeah. So uh, we've got one more at the back, Cindy. Um, so thank you all for participating. Um, top points for participation. Um, we're going to have another chance for that later, hopefully. Um, one of the other uh, area ways you can do it, and we, one of this answer over here was kind of along the same lines, is this idea of transfer learning. Um, and Cindy mentioned it in her introductory rem remarks, where you take a pre-trained model and then do the um, 
apply the concept of transfer learning, so you, you are training it on for a particular application like fruit, for example. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about transfer learning and how to do that, uh, MathWorks has a, two, a free two-hour on-ramp course on deep learning. You can access it on our website. And that will take you through concepts about deep learning in more detail. Okay, let's move on to the next exercise, which is sending our object recognition data to the IoT aggregator ThingSpeak. So Cindy did uh, some opening remarks about what is IoT uh, and um, where, what do we do with this information. So uh, typically IoT data gets sent up to the cloud, let's say, um, to an aggregator service, and I, uh, ThingSpeak is an open platform for that. So in this example, so exercise two, if you want to double click on it and open it up, what you'll notice is the code is almost identical to what you have just experienced. The difference is at the very bottom where we're now going to be sending our data. You as individuals will be sending your data up to a ThingSpeak uh, channel. So I'm just going to uh, go through these, the, the, the first few lines of code are the same, so I'm not going to go over them again. Um, but the last section of code is the part where we send our data up to ThingSpeak using the function ThingSpeak write. Uh, and so the input uh, arguments that are set into this function are, first of all, the channel ID. Um, so before we can understand what is a channel ID, I'd like to explain what a channel is. So a channel um, is a uh, kind of a location where you can save and retrieve your IoT data. Now we want a unique identifier. So for example, your um, image classification uh, uh, results aren't being sent to someone else's temperature sensor monitoring channel. So the unique ID that we're using for this workshop um, is listed on the screen. It's already in your scripts. We're going to send the label. Um, of the output from the classification algorithm, and then we're sending a write key. Um, so the write key is kind of like a password that allows us to write to this particular channel. Uh, click next. Okay, so let's do the second hands-on workshop. Um, you won't see any output from running this uh, exercise to your monitor. So you won't necessarily know that your data was sent up to the cloud, um, I'd like you to run it a few times because then we're going to start to look at the results. Uh, and if you're interested in, if you've run it a few times and want to look at what the results are, you can go to this thing speak channel. So um, I'm going to give you about four or five minutes to uh, do this. So run it a few times on your computer and we can see what the results are. Those. For those of you who are interested, we've switched over um, the screen to have a live feed of the results that are coming into the ThingSpeak channel. So what you'll see on the right are the results um, that you and all of the other participants in the room have sent up to the cloud if you aren't actually looking at it on your website and your, on your personal computers. Okay, we are going to Wrap up exercise two, and I'm going to flip over to the PowerPoint slides. Fantastic. OK, so we had a really great question during that um, section about, OK, so it, can I use, um, so the, the question was about, like, how do I look at all of the data and, and in that, that are, that's up here? but can I pull it into MATLAB and, and look at my data within MATLAB? So each of you as individual participants uploaded data to the cloud. Um, and in our next example, we're going to show how then you can look at the data and analyze the data that everyone in the room collectively sent up to the cloud by reading from our ThinkSpeak channel onto your MATLAB online. Um, account. Okay, so for our third exercise, what we are doing um, is taking that data, pulling it into MATLAB on your computer, 
and then performing some data analysis on it to visualize what we as a group um, recognized with the object recognition. Okay, so the first line of code here is related to um, this thing speak read function. Um, and that's the function that you use to take the data from our ThingSpeak IoT channel and pulling it into the MATLAB environment. So the first thing we need is our read channel ID. We need to specify what fields from the channel we want to collect. So in this case, the first field contains the labels. We want to collect data from the last two hours. So that's num minutes 120. We have to pass in the read key. Um, so we don't need a password like we did for the write function because this is an open public channel. So it's set up so that anyone can read from the channel. And then finally, we are specifying that the output format for our data is going to be in table format. The next section of code for exercise three is, how, is a way or an example of how you can visualize your data. So in this example, we're going to create a histogram. So that's going to be similar to the histogram that you saw on the screen when I was um, showing that live feed of what everyone was doing. Um, so what this code is doing, it first of all looks at um, all of the labels um, that's brought into your MATLAB workspace from the, the read command from the first section and categorizes them using the function categorical, identifies the unique labels and then uses the histogram function to create the histogram. And then the remainder of the code is setting a title and access to your graph like all good engineers and scientists, we like to annotate our graphs. Great, so let's get started with our third exercise. We have um, just a few more minutes to be able to do this. Um, so I'll give you a few minutes to, to look at the exercise. So that's exercise three press the green run button, and then you should be able to see an output of a histogram in a MATLAB figure. Okay, let's wrap up exercise three here. We're getting a lot of really great questions, um, and a couple of the questions are uh, related to how do I um, re, if, I, if the network, like for example, AlexNet is trained on a certain set of images. What if I want to have a different set of images? Um, so some of these concepts are explored in more detail in our deep learning on-ramp that I mentioned a little bit um, earlier. Uh, so I'd recommend that you, if you want to explore that in more detail, um, to check out the deep learning on-ramp. Um, I'm pressing the wrong button. Uh, there we go. So what we should have seen, actually, let's just open it up for a little bit more audience interaction. Um, what did you guys see um, when you plotted the results? Lots of apples. So I didn't hear you. Is there anything, any other interesting observations? Very interesting. Thank you. Chihuahua, yes. <laughs> Um, some of the other interesting ones, we got this when we uh, ran the event, this workshop at the Grace Hopper Celebration, were things like um, tiger cat. I would have been very excited to see a tiger cat in the room. Um, don't, you got a toilet seat. Oh, that's, and, uh, oh, I got a piano too when I did this at, at my desk, so awesome. Um, so just for the sake of time, because I think we are being kicked out of the room, um, I just want to make sure we wrap up. If you have further questions, Cindy and I and Daryl will be around, and we're more than happy to answer them. Um, but I want to kind of summarize what we've talked about today. Um, so the channel is where the, in, the is a particular location in the cloud on ThingSpeak where we have sent our data and where we have retrieved our data. So if so, this channel we have used for this particular workshop. But like, if you wanted to set up your own channel to do your own application or recreate this, that's certainly possible. Um, and you can get started with a ThingSpeak account um, to create your own channel for that. Simulink, so you're asking whether Simulink will interface with ThingSpeak? 
That's a good question. Um, I'd have to look into it for you. If you wanted to um, see me at the break, we can chat about it. Okay. I really do need to wrap up because I'm being kicked off the, the stage here. Okay, so just to wrap up, what you've seen here today is how easy it can be to get started with deep learning and IoT. We covered three exercises. You have access to these exercises for about a month. Um, and we'd, like to, we'd love to keep in touch with you. So call to action, look into the deep learning on-ramp course, check out Things Speak, and you have some take-home exercises in those files you downloaded, so have a play with those. And our contact information is on the screen here. Um, thank you very much for your time. Cindy and Ruth, Cindy and Ruth don't go too far because we have some gifts. We want to thank you so much. Um, huge hand again for Cindy and Ruth and really appreciated the session. Thank you. Thank you. And before we go, would it surprise you to know we wanted to take a room selfie? Would it? I don't think it would. Yes. Come up this way. What's a room selfie? A selfie of the room. The selfie of the room. Let's do it. I'll come this way. Get some of you, all right. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, bananas, apples. Yay. Thanks. <laughs>